Wait, 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 stop. Is this weird? This feels weird. Now why would it be weird? You don't think this feels a bit, hmm, nepotistic? I was gonna say narcissistic. Oh, good word. You have a wonderful vocabulary. Thank you, and you're an excellent host of this show. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm starting to see the narcissism now. Agreed, let's, let's not do it this way. Do you have any other ideas? You know, I think I know a guy. Let me call in a favor. Thank you, Mob Ross. I'm here to bring you the final episode of Between Two Wolves, featuring our one and only Aristotle, who has you know, been awesome throughout this entire year of bringing you these interviews. And it's finally time for his moment in the sun to shine. Uh, how you doing, man? Who said that? I can't see anything out of this crown. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> you got your crown on tight. It's uh, it's me, Shadow Vision. Oh, howdy. Well, thank you so much for covering for Mob. He was, uh, that was a little awkward. We didn't want to pull it off that way. To answer your question, I'm doing very well, and I'm excited to be doing this. Thank you for, for being here, man. No problem. I, we actually have had this planned for the better part of the series, and it has just gone on so long with so many episodes, which has been awesome to see. I, I thought, you know, maybe this day would never come with, <laughs> with how many episodes you were getting, but I'm super excited to get into it and have everyone learn all about you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's been a treat getting to know all the people that I didn't before, getting to do them and show them off to the server. Yeah. So what are we doing today? We're doing just a standard normal magenta, and I'm precursoring my answer of what's my favorite content on the server by saying it's this. I love magenta, and I continue to. And I'm sure I'll gush about it later when it's appropriate. Yeah, I think that might be the piece of information about this interview that people uh, are already aware of. They're of pretty the aware. Day. I'm a little annoying about it. <laughs> Hey. It's, it's part of my personality at this point. For we, We've known this for years, and we adore you for it, because oh, someone's got to love magenta. Someone. Has. <laughs> that and Cyan, they're the two, the two unloved children from some. Absolutely. So for those who don't know you, who I don't imagine will be a particularly large audience on this video, uh, what do you do on the team? A bunch of miscellaneous stuff on the back end, some like financial and HR management, and then a, just a sprinkling of various elements of the game. I've done a little building, a few quests, uh, some items, but my big, my big in-game niche is uh, mechanism development, um, like with the music pack. And then I'm actually gonna like drop into the middle of the dungeon. This is how I like to start. Makes it oh, makes, okay. Gives a little variety. <laughs> and then my okay, I can't say I've done it this way, but let's Yeah, go. well that's that's partly why I want to gush about magenta. You can play it a different way each time. Just find a place to airdrop in like a parachuter. Yeah, but this parachuter. wasn't always there. This is actually a pretty recent addition, right? With it is, the, and it's the a drop. great one. But uh my major thing is video production. That was what I was originally brought on to do, and that is what I continue to do when needed. Oh, and uh brainstorming way too much in Discord, which you put up with. Absolutely. You're, you're hey. nice you've, had, you've had some great cleric ideas, and a lot of them have actually made their way into the game. So over a very long time, a lot of features have gone in because of you. So thanks for contributing. Well, thank you. I have already lost you, unfortunately. Here, um, you know what? I need to be glowing so you don't lose me. And this is a awesome new flower that I'm seeing for the first time at the top of the dungeon. I believe Chris put this in, right? He did. He indeed did. I'll so that, and maybe that ties into our next question. How you start the game? Uh, where'd you find it? And, <laughs> you know, at what point did you decide you wanted to join as a developer? That did indeed uh, tie into it well. So myself and my buddies back in college, um, two of which are team members now, Chris, Master Chris 92 and Ashley Ann, we all... Uh, met as grab bag roommates and we discovered Minecraft together and we just kind of naturally evolved into playing CTMs together. And uh, that was one of our primary games that all of us enjoyed. Some of us enjoyed some, some enjoyed others, but that was the only one that all of us enjoyed. So mm -hmm. uh, as a as a fun little anecdote, in the so there were a couple days after we passed our final exams, but before we graduated in our senior year, and the way we all celebrated was one last run of Legendary. Ah, that's a Bizarre. oldie but goodie for sure. Yeah, that was my first introduction to the CTM genre. Nice. Wow. That's so a good map. Yeah. So for us, because we had no concept of like the CTMC or the broader community, it was just super hostile. So, and then we somehow discovered Ragecraft. I think Ashley discovered it. She was the one who had her ear to the ground best. 
and she kept an eye on Helicio. And after we played two and three, she wanted to know what he was doing in around uh, mid 2017. And then she found his post advertising Monumenta. And now there's another Ragecraft coming as well. Yeah. So I'm yeah, sure I you guys are looking forward to that. Yep. Yeah. That's probably the first non Monumenta CTM we'll have played in five years when it comes out. Yeah. And how long have you known Chris and Ashley? Uh. 13 years now because it was 2010 that we met in, in, co in college wow that so is, I'm, I'm outing myself awesome. in an age there no long, long friendships are the best for sure they are and they're they're very, very rewarding friends. so in yeah. fact I was, I was talking to heli the other day um congratulating him on his recent video and letting mm -hmm. him know about r3 and he said r4 might be out before ragecraft 4 comes out which <laughs> absolutely not but yeah it was, it was i, a I good don't joke think so <laughs> but who knows we'll try our best yeah. Uh, so as for how I became a developer, I did not try to become one. Uh, I made the video, which was like Monumenta Explained, which is how I would pitch the game to myself. If I, because I thought like, how do, how do people not know about this? If I was to pitch it to myself, what would I say? So I made that video and then Chip reached out to me saying, do you want to make more videos for the server? Mm -hmm. And then also build some roguelike rooms because we need builders. Still true to this day, but yeah. a lot has a lot has changed. A lot of new content has been made, but still, roguelike something that's pretty popular. A lot of people play it, and yeah. a lot of your rooms are still in there, so that's awesome. Yeah, in in one of the recent interviews, I got a room that I made, and it was the one I failed worst on. <laughs> I was I'm not a great builder, and at the time, the pitch was make it as miserable as possible. This should be the end game content, not make it play well. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah, so you've been a part of the dev server for a very long time. Um, so what is kind of your favorite? What did you say? Hour one of day one. Hour one of was, day one. And yeah, then almost there. that long as a developer, it sounds like. So you, you've seen a mm -hmm. lot of changes over the time. Um, I guess let's tidy into the next question then about um, your username. How do you come up with it? <laughs> and uh, would you make any changes today or are you still happy with it? I'm very happy with it, although I wish I had Aristotle for in-game. But uh, C.S. Lewis is my favorite author, and Aristotle is my most respected thinker. And both of their works have changed my life substantially. And so I wanted to honor them both with uh, combining them into a username. It was and for the uneducated, uh, what are some of C.S. Lewis's works that you enjoy? Uh, well, Narnia is the thing that he's known best for, but that's probably my least favorite of his fiction. Um, wow. I'll get into this later, but Mere Christianity is my favorite of his books, where he goes about the basics of the religion. Till We Have Faces is a really cool retelling of Cupid and Psyche, which we reference here in Monumenta. Mm -hmm. um, his Space Trilogy is one of the weirdest things I've ever read in my life, and it's like a weird pseudo sci fi. Uh, That's really cool. Thing. Yeah. So I'm his his work is probably the only thing in life I'm an actual expert on. Like I know it backwards and forwards. <laughs> I think after five years or so of monumental development, you can call yourself an expert at that too. Oh, well, thank you. I don't know. There's right. still some times that even like new guys, these plugin devs will come in and they'll ask me a question and I'm like, I have no idea. I am not a well, plugin dev. It's impossible to know everything about the game these days. Yeah. And the, uh, the Aristotle thing is kind of a funny inside joke with myself that uh, he, he never wrote anything down, the historical figure he would mm. teach it by walking with his students and then just talking to them. And they took notes, and that's what we know from Aristotle. And the way that I work through something is I take a walk and speak it out loud to myself because I figure I can't, I can't skip things by intuition if I have to say it out loud. So it's just kind of a joke with myself. That is a fun fact for sure. Do you still read a lot today? Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, you have to tell us more about that in the hobby section. Maybe. Um, so jumping forward. Uh, also, you're going to have to lead me like the blind. And sure, sure. <laughs> well, I mean, this, I just, is, this is just a maze to me. It's just fun to wander. The point is the conversation. I yeah, for sure. It. I Enjoy just don't want to get stuck in one in circles. Make sure you don't have any loot to leave with. Oh, I'm not doing this for the loot. Although with Exalted's coming out, I probably should start stocking up on the rares. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you uh, yeah. have seen all the rares before, so we won't worry too much about that. I sure um, have. What is the piece of content that you've helped with that you dislike the most? Definitely dungeon races. And I guess we'll get to that on the... That's also my least favorite thing on the server, so I guess we'll get to that. Well, you, yeah, second. you can jump into it now if you want. Okay, so I just... I, I, I helped kind of update the system, and so I technically worked on them, but I think it's the piece of content that 
you basically play it wrong in order to do well at it. To, to do a dungeon race well is to ignore everything about the dungeon and just reduce it to a, a non-combat adventure mode rush from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And that irks me that we've turned these glorious dungeons into a find the fastest route run there. Interesting. Instead of rewarding, I, skillful, yeah. normal, conventional completion of it. It's not like fast is clear, it's fast is ignore everything. Do you think there's a way that we could have done that differently if you had gone back and thought about it, you know, all those years ago learning what you've done since? Or do you think it's just a bad idea from the start? I would have it be kind of like the bounty system that you had to break a certain number of spawners as you went, because mm. then it would become kind of a, you'd also metagame, like what are the easiest, what's the highest ratio of spawners that I have to break? And then that'll also bring you inevitably in contact with some mobs, so you have to do some fighting that way. It'd still that be a lot of just cool running idea. and not fighting, but that would that would solve. I mean, part that's of part of speedrunning, regardless. Yeah, whatever, sure, sure. What you're gonna do. And I get speedrunning. I actually knew one of the guys who went to uh, AGDQ personally. Had him over to my house, and he showed me some of his run strats. So I appreciate that. I just don't like it here. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried Monumenta? <laughs> I don't think he plays <laughs> Minecraft. I haven't kept up with him in years. This was a just a church friend back in my old hometown. Oh. Fearful Ferret was his username. If any there's there's any like super into into speedrunning communities who knew him. Cool. Watch this. Well, after at least favorite, we're gonna have to go Let's into go favorite, first. but I think we all know what that is. But yeah. maybe you wanna tell me a little bit about why and you know why you grew so attached to it, how it's changed over the years, you still feel the same way. Yeah, generally, um, I just think it epitomizes the things that I like about an adventure. I like uh, getting lost and having a sense of loss of direction about where to go. Uh, I like how the vertical design stacks on itself. So wherever you go, you have to be planning what you're spawning above and below. And it's one of the only places you have to watch out for mobs in six, di six directions instead of just one where you walk down a hallway and something spawns in front of you. Yeah, you walk, definitely. you might be spawning something above or below. And Reverie's Castle is the only other place I see that. And I like that. Definitely I like that. It has I, that CTM vibe for sure, more yeah. than a lot of other content. You're never in control in Magenta if you're if you're playing it quickly. You can certainly take it like inch by inch from the top, which I expect most people do. Well, there's still the play golems. True. Oh yeah, they're actually one of my favorite things about it because if you get knocked down to the bottom, I mean it's less of an issue now with all of our tools to get back, but that means you might have to do the whole dungeon from bottom to top, and then you get a whole new experience. <laughs> maybe not one you wanted but absolutely yeah but it's cool because it's their dark spawn there like you i don't know i i embrace the chaos uh-huh is there anything you would change about magenta yes the end is very lackluster uh not like not like just the water area which is pretty mediocre anyway but like the very very end is come up out of the water fight two elites dungeon over mm -hmm. uh, so i would make it kind of like the assassins of the wind section and sons of the forest where at the end, you think it's the end, you think it's your objective, and then those two elites spawn and they're invincible and they chase you out backwards through the dungeon that you just cleared in a really unconventional way mm -hmm. back to the start and the start opens up and that's where the wool was kept. So it's like a Indiana Jones kind of a, you know, we activated the trap, now we have to run backwards from it. Yeah, that'd be very unique. I don't think we've done that really in any other, other content, so definitely would be cool. But it is also the third dungeon, and it's kind of weird to be doing format screws this early. Yeah. Do you have a second favorite piece of content since everyone knows about Magenta? I mean, I like all our dungeons except Labs, but that's just because it's too easy. Labs, um, Aider. It's, it's not a bad piece of content. I wouldn't change anything about it. I just don't enjoy it. Yeah. It always um, surprises me when it sometimes places above uh, other dungeons on the yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah. It's I literally like just hate for some of our other dungeons. Yeah. Uh, Depths is an absolute masterpiece, and you should be proud of that. Every time I play it, I'm just floored at how fun that is. Thank you, man. So, I guess well, that is that is technically a dungeon, so it counts as the rest. But that's my answer. Yeah, not everyone calls it a dungeon anymore. There's still <laughs> lot, lots of people don't know where to put it, but uh, yeah, it means a lot. Um, so, if you were the dictator for a monument for a day, I'm sure you've heard a lot of other answers to this question. Uh, could you change anything about the game and no one would get mad at you, no one could complain? Uh, what would you do? I'm generally pretty happy with how we've taken things. Uh, Exalted would be would have been my biggest 
change, get some way of doing the original dungeons with the R3 kit. Mm -hmm. We're doing that, so that's nice. Uh, I'm really not fond of the delve mods that punish you for succeeding, like uh, Spectral and Dreadful and Colossal. And I would, I don't know how I'd rework them exactly. I, I'd make Colossal so that way you, it only activates if you break a mob in, or break a spawner in combat. But I think that oh. can ruin a whole lot of runs yeah. in unfair ways when you roll that like on later depths things. I've had, you okay? No, I'm fine, yeah. Okay. Didn't know if you're he shot me on in a straight line, not at a diagonal, so I'm not in the lava. Well, that was nice of him. Um, I'd like think. Oh yeah, this is gonna be my my hot take of the. Yeah, the let's get it. Hot take. Uh, I know people don't like the fast track. I think the fast track was like the best thing to happen to Monumenta, and I would do more of the game unhooking like content from other content. Like, mm -hmm. I think if you just want to do a quest run of Monumenta, why make you do dungeons? Just say, I'm going to forego all the rewards from the dungeons, and I want to skip forward. And uh, I'd make basically the whole game a fast track to the content that you want, as long as it is gated by similar content. You know, do dungeon, 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 not just skip yeah. to the next one. Oh, you know, I won't argue with you on that one. <laughs> um, I mean, Exalted, you mentioned, has been a long time coming as well. We've worked on that one, and like, it's always been an idea we wanted to do. And even since we got a concrete plan, and it's still taking a little while for sure. So definitely good to see that finally get added to the yeah. game later this year. It's gonna add a lot of substance to our end game, and you'll get to play Magento more. Yeah, with all my kit. All right. Next question: Who is your favorite other team member? Well, okay, so I'm going to take a leaf from Combustible's book on this. Dang it. Trap. Forgot how to disable uh -huh. that one. Um, so he got the easy question and could just say, we'll square. And I could say Chris, Chris because he's basically my best friend, aside from my little brother. That and, would make uh, a ton of sense. Yeah. But I'm going to use it as Combustible did, as an extra opportunity to praise some people on the team. He praised Chip for his optimism, and I'm going to praise Kron and Stick. Mm -hmm. especially if we're doing two of the most unpopular jobs on the server and coming up with really unique content and sticking to it and balancing, which is always always gets you attacked. So y'all do a great job, and I'm so glad that we have people like that. But really, and at the risk of being sycophantic, all the leads, I'm, I'm amazed at the fact that we went grab bag and got a bunch of random people and gave them total power over this volunteer project over six years, and we have eight very reasonable people who I yeah. don't, who I really enjoy their company behind this. So I'm really, really happy that the game worked out that way. Oh, thank you. And those are some good shout outs. You know, they both make a, well, Kronda makes a ton of unique content, a ton of really, really special stuff that isn't really anywhere else in the game. So And he makes great. the rest of it work. Like, what would you say? Half of the things we've come out with in the last year have him making the mechanisms behind it? I mean, I would, I would extend further than that, but yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to be conservative on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he makes the game work. and like For, for the gives, longest time, yeah. you know, if we needed anything to ship onto the play server, he was going to have to do the mix for it. And unfortunately now, his talent, he's took them on some walks like Aristotle did, and some more people are doing <laughs> that. But uh, yeah, for a long time, we were very dependent on him and stick as well for balance. So definitely a good shout there. All right, so what are your thoughts on upcoming Minecraft updates? Or if you aren't too familiar with them with the update process they've been doing in general uh, I, don't, I don't really care Minecraft is a monumental development kit as far as I'm concerned at this point um, and I guess a Ragecraft 4 development kit this is the, <laughs> only, the only thing in Monumenta or in Minecraft I play these days mm -hmm. uh, I think the oh, what's the spooky new mob that you find underground Ooh, the warden yeah the warden I think the warden's a really cool design even though it doesn't seem to be much in combat, but the fact that we made a great boss out of a giant makes me think that that could be a great raw material for something cool here. Definitely. And the giant, I, mean, I think, was impossible to get working before. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, any update that adds more customization for us to do cool stuff is a good update, and the rest, yeah. not so much. But and maybe more blocks. More blocks is great, too. <laughs> like, I don't think, I think brown explicitly happened because of the palette. It was like, now that we can do this, we make a steampunk dungeon. It definitely seems like the kind of thing that did. <laughs> so I, I know Chris can was enable excited about features. that from day one. For sure. Anytime there's a update with new blocks, he's usually coming out of his little hidey hole and back into the Discord just to gush about it. It's yeah. always very good to see. 
All right. Do you have a caffeine addiction? And if so, how bad is it? Medically, yes. Because Medically. there's a weak... Well, like, like scientifically, whatever. On the most objective sense, I think I logically do because there was a week in school where I had no caffeine and I went through like withdrawals, like full yeah, body withdrawal. sores. Dang. And so if you get through withdrawals, I think you're technically addicted. But um, I don't... I don't like crave it. My day doesn't center around it, but I drink about two, maybe two pots of coffee a day. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's it's a lot. But and just coffee, coffee is your main caffeine source, not oh yeah. Any I, other don't, I don't drink soda or tea. It's just co uh, caffeine. Yeah, coffee and water. That's all uh -huh. I drink. No Red Bull. No, no. <laughs> I'd like my heart to work past thirty. Yep. Let's go. Uh, what is something that you regret about Monumenta? It could be something that you did that you change if you could go back now uh, or something you haven't done yet that you wanted to. And honestly, you don't have much of an excuse at this point. You've been here five years. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, well, uh, any regret? <laughs> well, my regret is the former kind. Uh, I, I wish I knew what I did now about trying to get influencers to play our game because mm. I spent an inordinate amount of time uh, with that with absolutely no success. Um, all the send a whole lot of emails out to you know all the guys who once did CTMs, B Dubs, and and Elric, and uh, Zisimo was one of the ones. Although we did get some success with him with COTC, but yeah. that was just a huge amount of my initial work, and it was completely fruitless ultimately. I wouldn't say that. So I do regret that. And, and then, I mean, honestly, pretty much no one else in the community has expressed interest in being the you know the HR PR coordinator kind of role. So. All your effort there has definitely accumulated up to uh, probably most of what people know you for uh, on the team. So definitely hasn't been for nice. Well, thank say. you. But this is a nice kind of segue into uh, like the thing that I learned and what I really wish I knew back then was that they have for an influence for an influencer to be successful in influencing something, they have to really love it. And the audience is smart and they know that. And mm -hmm. like it's crazy to me that we had you know maybe. Between the COTC guys, we had maybe 10 million sub count between all of them, if I'm just adding them off the cuff, off the cuff of my head. And we got Crazy. maybe six people come because mm -hmm. of their, it, despite a year of them shouting it out. But then like Derelius, who had less than 10,000 subs, got just waves of people coming because they knew he loved the game. It wasn't just a shout out. Yeah, I and if I knew that, that back then, I could have immediately where you were so going much. with it. I knew Duralius was going to come up next. Yeah, as a, as a you know contrast. So would yeah. you say like around the time that he got involved with the server is the point at which you learned that? No, it took me a while to learn that. I didn't. I didn't really see that. I wasn't cynical enough. But that'd be my lesson. I would. I would send that back in time. Uh huh. And you know, has that learning affected your your plans for like future outreach for the server? Or in really the sense that it? I'm just not doing it at this point. I just don't know what <laughs> to do. Up. We, we we could throw money at it, but we don't have the money to throw at it. And uh, so I'm just going with the long, slow option of making a really good game and telling everyone I can about it. You hear that, patrons? Yeah. Look, you you have no idea the kind of money you need to drop. I don't want to like name any names, but I've talked to some people, and they're like you need x to get a main video and we do not have x we yeah. do not have x in the entirety of our bank account and it is even if we did how much it's money you need not that. necessarily worth the deal no what else we could do with that money i'd like monumenta to keep working i'll trade that for yeah for a shout out. the the trade-off we get for buying more servers and giving you guys less lag yeah, is definitely a lot more effective so it's worth it in the meantime we're not we're not just painstakingly making a game that no one's playing we're enjoying it we wouldn't be doing yeah. it otherwise. And it's not like we haven't grown over the years. You know, oh, we're yeah. playing oh, on, a, yeah. on a weekday evening, we got 50 players. And when you started, it was going to be like five. Oh, if even. There, if was, there were plenty of times I was the only person playing. Yeah, I definitely remember those days as well. So it's come a long way and no small part due to your effort. Well, thank you. All right. Was there ever a time, this maybe is a good segue as well, that you felt like giving up <laughs> on a project entirely to a point where you would scrap it, uh, despite maybe putting a lot of time into it? Yes, and I already have. It's uh, the voice pack. that I put a fair amount of time into making that happen, and I knew from the beginning that was never going to fly. We just had too many characters and not nearly enough voice talent even back then. And with the mm -hmm. scope of our cast now and... Not many more voice talent actors anyway. It just wasn't going to happen. So I gave up on that entirely. 
Do you still consider it something that's not viable? Or could it happen today? No, it absolutely could not happen today. I mean, who we have, what, maybe 20 core characters in our story? And how many people do you think could voice act? I mean, it depends how far you look, I guess, if you go to the community at large or if you just stick it to the developer team. But that's that's true. But it's, also it's like an uphill the, battle, I acknowledge. Yeah. With all the bug <laughs> fixes and updates we make to text, you know, we, we get a bug fix. There's this grammatical update, this grammatical thing. What, are we going to go re-record the line? Oh, I hadn't even considered that. You're right. Lots of maintenance overhead. So I have no desire to continue that, and I have given up. So when you join the team, did you feel completely overwhelmed or maybe hopeless? Or did you uh, hit the ground running from the start? I guess you said you were invited and weren't even planning to join. So how did that tie into things when you started? Uh, I was just very flattered. And uh, when I joined, it was mostly all veteran CTM map makers, uh, some of whose names I'd seen around in, in the maps I played. And so that was really intimidating in itself. But uh -huh. I, I didn't feel like... I don't know, stressed about it. It was just, oh, wow, I should watch myself and not assume I know what I'm doing yet. These guys know what they have. They've put out maps and know how to design things. I'll just help them as I can. It was funny because uh, Fang Ride, I had, no, I had no concept of who he was, but when I finally saw him, I'm like, wait a second, I've seen your name in like five maps. Everywhere. In the credits. Yeah, 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 from testers and stuff, and I'd never even considered, like, he wasn't a person in my mind. He was a name in the credits, and I finally put him to a face and a voice. I guess in some ways the team was more like visually impressive if you look at the names at that point because everyone's coming from the CTM community, all these giants that have been doing so much work there. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And so that was intimidating, but I didn't feel like bullied yeah. submissive. These days you've never heard of a Krondus or Stick map, as you've been saying, for a good shout outs, but you know, people these days don't know what they do until they like dig into, you know, specifically Monumenta. So definitely an interesting dynamic how that's changed. Yeah, that is. I hadn't thought of that. It's a great insight. Although we still got Chipmunk. He's still here. We do. And uh, Crims has come back and he's put out some maps. Yeah. Ways of Fate, definitely a really big one. So, awesome. So, into the CTM section we go. I'm sure you've got some insight here. Uh, do you have a favorite CTM map? Uh, do you still keep up with new map releases? Uh, yes it. and no, in order. I would say Ragecraft 3 is my favorite as a whole, but I think Ragecraft 2 had the better areas. Um, but those so two what, are just... So what made the other better? I I don't know. It's been years, but I look back and I think of all my favorite areas in the Ragecraft series, and they're all from 2. Mm. Uh, they just had more interesting gimmicks, I guess. But the like gameplay the... Was, the, was better in 3? Oh, so much better in 3. It was a very... It's, it's the gold standard of a CTM in terms of the gameplay package. All the, the class updates and you had a co couple cool format screws as he messed with you. No, that was in two. Dang it, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I look back and I'm like, wait, no, that was in two. So Yeah, your title is showing itself a little bit. <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah, I can't see my own. But yeah, Boomer. Yeah, Boomer. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then I have to shout out Unchart uh, not Uncharted Territory, um, Simulation Protocol 3. If that if that was finished and the mob and loot game was a little stronger, I think that would be like the best CTM ever. I, I have such fun. Build, build wise, definitely the best. Oh my gosh. I just, I, I, I almost have nostalgia light for it for like game that I played in my childhood. Yeah. Even though it only came out like four years ago. It's so good. Four? No, you're, you're lying. Four years? I remember it was after Monumenta came out because I was here, and that's the only CTM I've played since joining this. That is crazy. Because someone that that new. in dev chat was like, you need to play this. This is." I feel like I was a child when I played that. <laughs> well, do you still keep up with them? New releases today? or I do not. If I want a CTM fix, I come here because I'm not tired of this game, and I'll play Ragecraft 4 just out of interest, and it's got too much of a reputation to skip. What would you say it is about Monumenta that's kept you engaged for such a long period of time compared to the CTM genre? Mm. We're getting we're skipping ahead because I wanted to talk about this on a, a later <laughs> section, but, but that's fine. I welcome it. In fact, um, have you ever played? Do you know what the immersive sim genre is of video games? It's more of like a design simulator genre. No, it's kind of a bad name, but it it describes games in which 
instead of prescribing a solution, it gives you a toolkit and expects you to figure out how to solve a problem, but not like in a puzzly way, like in, in combat. And as a result, mm -hmm. like things can be done that the developer never thought of. Um, and they do, do it by making a bunch of parallel systems. And I, I think that the CTM genre is that in a format with just taking, sorry, that's a better way to put it. It takes Minecraft's base systems as those parallel systems. We all understand those and then says, you can use those however you want because it's in survival mode to accomplish a combat adventure objective. And that's the magic of it. Yeah, and you can you can get your friends and kill horsemen in one second if you want to. Yeah, well, that's Monumenta specifically. I mean, instead of, hey, go over there and click the spawner to destroy it, you could stay back and build a TNT cannon. Or you could bridge out and drop lava on it to stop the spawn. Mm. Or you could, you know, mine through the walls and just pop out at the points that you want to attack the spawners. Like, that freedom is the glory of CTNs, and that's... I, I love other games that do that, and CTNs in particular are this version of it. And then Monumenta took all that goodness made it consistent and co-op and extrinsically rewarding to keep playing and then added a really like solid gameplay class system combat around it because CTMs don't have really great combat. It's everything else about it that you like. Interesting. So it's just I kind of the like ultimate... A lot of people play CTM for the combat. But you're oh. saying this is this is a lot better in Monumenta. I mean, I definitely agree with you. We have the class system and all of that, but I didn't realize you played CTM for a different reason. So that's really cool insight. Oh. Yeah, it's just kind of my ultimate game. It's it's uh, closer to what I want out of any video game ever. Oh, very high praise. Well, considering I helped make it, it would be... It's very self, self-congratulatory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were all pieced in a much larger puzzle, though. True, true, true. Um, so you've been... Kind of the community manager, some would say, of Monumenta for a very long time. Uh, what is the favorite bit of drama you've seen over the years? So I'm a little upset at Cringe for finally naming mine Fallen Angel. Absolutely. No one brings up Fallen Angel. Really? I feel like that's the go-to answer. You would think, but I think maybe one other person in all these interviews, someone answered that. They, a, a lot of the mods said Horseman, which is really, really weird to me. <laughs> I thought they would be the least ones to it. But yeah, like Fallen Angel was just... It wasn't that negative in the sense of we didn't have some falling out with a lot of bad emotions. It was just one player going absolutely True. nuts, and we got a Navy SEAL copy pasta out of it. <laughs> like the Monumenta equivalent of it, and so rewarding. Uh, to those who are watching who might not be familiar with the story, he was a, a player who, this is back when all the uh, personal plots were on a single world, like in a neighborhood that you could walk to and from them, and you could unlock your house um, to let other people in, and some people would forget to lock it again. So this guy just decided one day to walk like the whole plot shard, go into anyone's plots who was open, take whatever he wanted from them, and then he was like instantly caught. And he sent the mods this incredible like rant and threat about how you know he was going to DDoS the server and refund the money he'd given, and like and his his famous line was "Thunder is coming." Thunder is coming. And it's so edgy and so over the top, and like there's no bad feelings about it. We don't have to go. Oh, we're such a shame. He left. Yeah. It was just so funny. I, I miss that kind of drama. Had that anything that iconic since? Yeah, yeah. You guys got to get more creative when you like grief on our server. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, I think I might have added that question after we did yours. What was yours? What was your answer? Uh, I do not remember. Okay, maybe I, I don't think mine was the first. Okay. Because the patrons kept adding questions as we went. Yeah, I, I definitely thought of Thunder is Coming, though, and I was like, that's too mainstream. Yeah! Well, it's <laughs> just because it's... I mean, I just named Ragecraft as my favorite CTMs. I'm very vanilla. I have hey, milk toast opinions. Nothing wrong with it. It's a, it's a good answer, for sure. Uh, we need to go to the fire one, which is yeah. total number four. I'm lost, which is what you wanted. Yeah, I'm also barely paying attention. I'm just going on muscle memory. Yep. Well, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> That is why you must lift. It gives your muscles the memory. True. Uh, actually, let's just go down first, and we'll we'll make our way back up. Sounds good. Just em embrace the chaos. I've already found myself in some webs. There we go. We'll quit it. That's bad for you. Yeah, well, I'm working on some content right now with a whole lot of webs. <laughs> so I better get used to it. 
Oh, 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 do tell. Is this our... Uh, this is your interview. All right, we're moving. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a scar? And if so, do you have a story to go with that scar? Uh, I've got one bisecting my left eyebrow that looks kind of cool, but I think I just got it. I think I was in kindergarten and I was jumping around at the public library and split my head on the counter. So not a very cool story. That but a pretty doesn't cool sound scar. good. No, it was, it was fine. I just went to the emergency room, got some stitches. And it was fine, guys. Cool. I just yeah. went to the ER. I mean, oh. Boys are boys. We do stupid stuff. <laughs> we get injuries and it's part of the fun. Full recovery, I hope. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, it's your... I might be brain damaged. That's that's kind of your call, not mine to say. But I think it was fine. That's the that's the brain damage talking. I know a lot about head injuries. Believe <laughs> me. Cool. Well, moving on. As far as school goes, what were your favorite subjects, and would you say they influenced the way you go about developing Monumenta? I liked almost everything I studied in in school, um, except like the sort of home ecky classes like uh college reading and study skills which i can't believe that's a class but the uh, so i studied mechanical engineering which was my major in mm -hmm. college and i took a whole lot of liberal arts stuff along with that and i just liked all of it um in terms of my electives i took uh, logic uh, philosophical not digital it's it's funny i think <laughs> i i know a lot of engineers and they seem to be way more up on programming and computer science than I am and I my 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 school my program for mechanicals had not a single bit of it I never touched a single bit of programming or learned any language in school and I think that <laughs> didn't do us any favors well have you had to do any of it since at your job no but I practiced civil and then controls after that after I graduated so that's three industries and none of them require coding well, so maybe like that you was... made efficient use of your time then. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Never having to go back and code. You know, you that's, ever... that's a good way to think about it. You, you ever wish you did so that you were able to, to help a little bit more on the plugin side of Monumenta or totally mm, fine not to? Not especially because I feel like I, I already have my hands full with things I want to do. Absolutely. I'm not really passionate about it. And I also, the rate at which I develop is, is a plotting. I just, I do things as I want at a slow rate and then I never get burned out. Yeah, you have good team life balance for sure. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I I can't think of any particular subject that informed my work here, but it just made me a better person. All those classes on liberal arts and taught me how to speak to people and how to think, and that helps. Interesting. You don't hear a lot of people saying going to school made them a better person, but that's a great way to look at it. Well, that's if you embrace the liberal arts and do them right that's kind of what they're for is making you a good person cat productions is smiling right now is he yeah he what do you say liberal, that he loves his liberal arts <laughs> good for him a big fan of uh bettering yourself like that so he'll like your answer for sure Moving well he was on. the first interview so that that's there's a nice mirror there true oh man no i'm lost well that's not Where good is Okay, right across here. We got this. Here's the fire one. Sweet. This is always the hardest key for me. Like It I is. Would, I would clear eight of them, and I'd be like, what on earth did I miss? It's like up these random stairs. Maybe that's what you should have changed about this content. Yeah, there you go. Your <laughs> make, the, make the fire I, I think the end is way now. weaker than this, but yeah, it is, it is kind of weird. It's very off-key. Well, we did reduce the amount of keys needed. It used to be you need all nine. Now you can forgo this, I believe. True. Lose it. Okay. So you fixed a lot of things about the game over the years. You're actually one of our more prolific bug fixers. What would you say is the most difficult or interesting one you've encountered? Making the Delve bounty system work for all sorts of niche cases. Like, oh, I already cleared that for the week, and now it's my bounty, and now I can't get it. Um, covering all those niche cases was really frustrating, especially because I didn't make the system to begin with. I had to pick it up and learn it and then make that work. Mm -hmm. So probably that. Cool. Do you have a favorite mech thing that you've worked on? Because you've done a ton of stuff like that with the dab and all the dungeon delve mechs. Mm, the dab enabled people to play together without questing, and I like that, that effect. Definitely. But I think the music pack is my favorite addition to it. It adds a lot. 
for sure. We have a lot of like insane amount of really talented composers. We do. It's so weird. And I mean, the whole for those who aren't familiar with its history, the music pack didn't come out because we put out a call for music. It's fans started making music and we were like, well, this has to go in the game. Like just as projects as tributes to the game. And that was so cool. Yeah. So, and that's still how it works is they say, I want to make a song for this content. And we say, we'll put it in the game. It's not, we try to recruit or commission. Do you have a favorite track in the pack? See, I'm going to, I'm going to be vanilla again. I got to say far. Far. Everyone loves Far's theme. So Far will be playing right now. Ooh, that's a... I didn't... Yeah, I might. I might. We'll see. <laughs> it's overplayed. I even used it in some content that's going to come out this week. Oh, awesome. Looking forward to that, then. Cool. Well, moving forward, what would you say is your most embarrassing skill issue moment that you've had playing the game? Uh, I will put the footage right here, but there was one time where I did a roguelike run solo back when it was a uh, permadeath and I brought everything all at once I'm like I'm just gonna do one run and upgrade everything at once mm -hmm. um, so I had like a shulker box full of rares to make into enhanced rares and I don't think I had epics but a lot of valuable stuff because I was committed to not dying that run and then on subset 2 a creeper fell right behind me and brought me zero to nothing and I think I stopped playing for like a week <laughs> only a week <laughs> yeah, like I said, I don't get burned out. I love this game, but that is impressive. That was my biggest skill issue by far. That was such a dumb move. Yeah, how much X X uh, HXP would you say you lost as a result? I don't know the market values, but I'd say maybe a stack, which was huge back then. That is, yeah, at the time that was for sure massive. I mean, we've had general MMO inflation since then for years. So yeah. I also don't hoard a lot of money. I have less than a stack of HXP even now. He's a nomad. What? I said you're a nomad. You're a you're a traveling monumental player. Yeah, there you, you go. You don't hoard. You just play the content you want. Yep. He's fun. I mean, we're playing a normal magenta instead of optimizing for delve mats. I appreciate that. Let me see. <laughs> Great. Yeah, 48. 48 hyper experience. I only have three. I have three HCS. Oh, man. But That's it's not like you're a poor player. You've you've upgraded what there is to do in the game. You just don't go sure, beyond sure. that. I really should sell some of my to legacies. The, to the I've, viewers. I bet the collectors would play a bunch for like, Yeah. I mean you've completed pretty much all content, right? Uh I haven't like done the max del point challenges because I think they're silly, but Yeah, yeah, I'd say all the main content. Good. You're qualified to be a developer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that's finally established. Yeah. I mean, that's the standard uh, for devs and mods today, but like, people don't really acknowledge how much we've added to the game over the years when it comes to that. It's like 100 hours or something like that. Oh, easily. Back if you're speedrunning, if you had less. like a guide. You okay? I am. I wish, but I, that wish was I had close. more to help you, but this is proving to be the most difficult part of the dungeon. I had a fire res if I absolutely needed it, but yeah, that was that was bad. I have 102 levels, so 103 now. So I'm glad I didn't lose them right there. That would have been that would have been my new answer for skill issue moment. I've got 128 here, but I'm prepared to lose them. Yeah, yeah. Playing playing normal, my favorite dungeon in full epics infused, and I died too in the interview on camera. That's a skill issue right there. Well, let's hope it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, so since all dev work is voluntary, what motivates you to keep working on the stuff that you want? I love the game and I enjoy working with y'all and I take it at a rate where I never get burned out and so it's almost how could I not? How could I not keep working on it? It's a delight. Very concise um, answer. I mean, is there any of it that you would say is for players to enjoy what you do or is most of it for yourself? Yeah, yeah, I definitely want players to enjoy it, but I put so little in the game that's for that sort of thing. It's rather I, I bug fix or I advertise or... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't resent the community. I just, I don't really make it for well, you've them. Made, you've made a ton of videos, right? The videos are mm -hmm. mainly for other That's people true. to watch. Or do you really enjoy making the like the process of editing, putting them together? How did Sometimes, you get into yeah. that? That is, uh, that's a later. I'll, I'll get to that in a later <laughs> question. This is, it's one of the ones I'm most looking forward to because it's a fun story. All right. Don't you die! No! I'm okay. So since you're actually, that's a good. Point, actually since you're such an avid cleric player what 
what draws you to the class so much? Do you just really like helping other people? Yeah, generally. I, I like to play healers in any game I play. Um, I also like the stupid berserk style of it. I can go in and attack something and then heal back up when I make mistakes. When, not if. Mm -hmm. and I also like the theme. I like the whole holy night. I don't like edgy stuff, edgy holy dark stuff. Like, I, yeah. And like, I love Warlock's play style, but it's it's a creepy thing to play, and I get I get bad feelings <laughs> when I do it. No offense, Stick. That's, that's the opposite of a lot of other players. Yeah, that's edgy stuff cool. just doesn't appeal to me. But Warlock's play style is amazing. Like, Stick's done a great job designing that one. Yeah. I mean, a lot of our classes have evolved over the years. They're all pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. Well, no, Alk. If you say that publicly, you're going to be crucified. Right well, now, Alk is the devil, right? Alk has always been the devil. <laughs> I think it's probably gone under like five to ten reworks over the years. Something like that. I just uh, exclude it from my mind when I think about class balance. I'm like you. I only I only get involved in the class I play, and I mostly one trick. So sure. Well, to be fair, I play all seven. Not not all fourteen specs, but I do play all seven classes. Cleric's just my favorite. Yeah. Cool. So what do you wish the player base would stop doing? Having witnessed a lot of their mm. antics over the years. Could be anything that's annoying or demotivating to you. Yeah. Uh, when we're playing, just treat us as players unless it's an emergency. It's not fun to have someone like to like host a world boss and have someone join the call wondering why their high heels of Hildebrand have gotten 2% less fire resistance on a Tuesday. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I am not interested in fielding your questions right now. We have a lot of official ways for you to report bugs and relay your concerns. And when we're playing is not really when we want to hear them. And I, I think a lot of the devs have, no, I won't make that claim. Some devs might have pushed a, been shied away from engaging with the community because they don't have that filter. I think that's a fair statement. Surely at least one dev has over the years. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's, that's, that's a safe zone, at least one. Yeah. I don't think anyone else has said that in the interviews that I've watched, so... Definitely Some of the mods have asked that people statement. don't bug them with... Uh, don't DM them with mod help, just use the official channels, because sometimes they're just playing the game. So, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. That cool. was... I got chat down, so I haven't... I don't have, like, a log of it, but that was seven... I was six. Six, six. okay. SMH. SMH, <laughs> man. I, I have no idea what we have and what we're missing. I see four, but chat's covering the rest, so. How dare they? Talking. Talking Corrupting in our, our game. Our list. It would be a shame if there was a, if there was no thing up at the top that told us exactly which ones we have. Someone should really add that. Oh, is that what it does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those those shrines light up to tell us how many you have. Busy being cave spidered. Interesting. Yeah, right next to the levitation or slow fall station. I'm just going to go for the last two down here. I know where they are. Great. Now we'll hop down with you. Cool. So moving on away from the Patreon questions into the more generic life stuff about you. Well, I guess... Oh, dear. <laughs> hey, I mean, I, I think you know what's coming more than anyone else. True, yourself. true. Unfair <laughs> advantage there. Absolutely. Um, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but do you have any other insights on why Monument is special to you? Uh, that was, uh, we skipped ahead by ask, answering that. I talked about Immersive Sims and how it's kind of my ideal game. Yeah. Um, on the Immersive Sim thing, are, are there any other g examples of games that you would say like are mm -hmm. good like examples deus ex the original is probably the most famous one uh the designer of that war inspector was kind of the one who coined that term in the public view uh irrational games and looking glass games uh, both kind of make their whole thing on that uh, arcane has picked up the slack on that but the dishonored series system shock 2 thief um bioshock just a lot of those games that have really open-ended problem solving prey prey 2017 that was probably the last really really good one noida i'm going off on a tangent but yes that whole thing is my favorite genre yeah go for it of video games. 
Yeah. A lot of older stuff. You came prepared. <laughs> Once again, showing the title there. <laughs> stuff from the 90s. Yeah. Not so what would you say your hobbies are outside the game? Uh, I like thinking about a lot of things and reading. Uh, mostly fiction. I don't like nonfiction too much. Um, Weightlifting. I'm really involved in my church. I know that's not really a hobby, but it occupies too much of my time. No, it's definitely a hobby. Uh, in what way? Do you do volunteer work or do you help with service? Yeah, I, I teach Sunday school. I help out people around the service. I've got several community groups and Bible studies. and I would absolutely say that's there. a hobby. And shooting. And I think I said weightlifting and video games. And that's kind of those six or so are it. Yeah, I think we assume video games for most of our interviewees. You'd be surprised how many say I don't play any video games but but Minecraft. So, Interesting. Yeah, I was kind of surprised at that Well, too. you're certainly not one of those. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> cool. So what do you do for your career? I am a control systems engineer right now, which uh, is kind of a vague title, but the important part is that I design and draw blueprints. So I'm a CAD tech. I do a lot of AutoCAD and uh, make plan sets in computer designs that we send out to the field. So what does a, a day look like for you? Uh, mostly at a computer, working in AutoCAD, making blueprints to give to people. <laughs> is it a nine to five? Yeah, yeah, it's very standard. I have a very stable life. But I've worked cool. as a civil engineer and done like surveying and uh, land surveying, but out and about with GPS and mapping, finding out what's out on a property. And you work with your best friend, right? I do. Chris uh, actually worked here first and invited me down here to do that job with him. So that's the, the guy who made brown and pink, and his wife is Ashley. Mm -hmm. so I, I know I can't assume that everyone is in on the, the friend lore there. Yeah. Have you lived in uh, Texas your whole life? I have. Born and raised in North and then moved down to Central several years ago, and now I'm more South. Yeah. So it's been a graceful swoop southwards. Cool. It's wonderful. It's very hot. <laughs> I love it. You get the odd... Uh cold wave now and then but yeah that cripples every all of our infrastructure because no one's ready for it wait there's temperatures below 30 fahrenheit okay. it's the same here in north carolina honestly. nice cool well what would you say has surprised you most about making the game uh two points that are kind of opposite uh one is that it works so well because if you were to like if you were like a bright-eyed young kid who came to me and said, I'm going to make a free MMO that's survival and, and we're not going to pay anyone and it's going to have hundreds of hours of content and be really fun, I'd say that's ridiculous. That'll never work. You have to have some kind of incentive or structure or prior team. And we've just recruited randoms from the internet to make one of the coolest things I've ever played. And that's insane to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and the opposite point, so that's, that's a big surprise, is that uh, there's only 50 people on. Like, because this is one of the coolest things I've ever played. How how has the word of mouth not gotten not, not gotten out? Yeah, I feel you, um, man. It <laughs> it's just you know, it was a, it was crazier when it was five million. for sure. But yeah, but it's like a tweet can introduce millions of people to mi millions of people millions of people to an idea, and it's just like yeah. we might be one social media post from the right it person could. away. Yeah. And that, that was my hope in trying to get all these influencers, but just giving up on that. So that's kind of a shame. I really but thought about it that way, but you're absolutely right. It's a good game, and that's a surprise. And it's not successful, and that's a surprise. Well, was that different, right? de different definitions of success. Yeah, uh, but it's I still worth was, it either way. I think it's a great that was joke. nine. Hmm. We got eight earlier. But is that eight total? Can we continue? Oh, I don't know. Let's try. Let me go check. I like that the epic from this dungeon is very useful in the dungeon. Yeah, that is nice. I really thought that about that till now. It's probably... I'd say it's the weirdest of all the dungeon epics, because at least the others are for combat or a particular class. I got stuff like Firmament. 
That's true. For, That's true. Of life, stuff like that. Definitely all over the place. Hooray! Can we proceed? Absolutely. If we finish it by the time the questions are over, that's a good, good time. Oh, well, probably gonna be about that time. Assuming I. Yeah, we don't even have to full clear up. this. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I have no idea where all the chests are. I every time I've done this, which is only about less than ten times, I just straight run to the end. Gotcha. Yeah, this is just for the fun and for the clear. We could honestly make a real straight route. Cool. All right. Um, on to the favorites. What would you say is your favorite movie, TV show? We can do them one by one or all at once, whatever you want. It's pretty also very vanilla. My favorite movie is the Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, which for the purpose of rating is one big movie. It was all shot at once and edited at once and they came out right next to each other. Or not edited. They was all shot at once and then edited. Anyway, love those. Uh, favorite television show? Yeah. Is that what you said? Fargo. Uh, seasons one through three are pretty much perfect television, in my opinion. What is but that I don't about? watch I've never heard of it. It's a very weird fable parable drama set up in North Dakota around Duluth, ironically. Oh. It's not in, actually in Fargo. But it's based off a of Coen Brothers movie, although it has nothing to do with it in terms of characters. It's just kind of the style of it. It's very good. Very cool. I don't watch a lot of tele television, so don't take that as a someone who's seen everything. This is the best thing. It's from someone who's seen very little. This is what stands out. Sure. Um, book series? I, I know you already mentioned C.S. Lewis, but mm -hmm. any, any series that stands out to you? I do love Lord of the Rings. Um, I like Sanderson's works. It's funny. There's a few mirrors with a uh, cat had the very first interview and he named he named them. He's a big Sanderson guy, too. Yeah, love Sanderson. Sunny's into them as well. Nice. Very popular. Yes, she changed her status to some of the quotes from it. I noticed that. And I was like, oh, she's there in the Stormlight Chronicles. Yeah, Stormlight I'll get around to reading it eventually. They're, they're worth it. Way of Kings, which is the first Stormlight, is probably my favorite of all of his. So if you get there and you don't like it, then I can't help you. I'll know. I'll know. I'm hopeless. <laughs> there you go. Or it's just not all for you. Cause that's, Fair enough. That's probably the best thing from him. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, musical artist. There's a German born British composer named Max Richter, who I really like. And then a Japanese one named Haruka Nakamura. Uh, they do mostly classical kind of neoclassical with some electronic elements for texture. Hmm. Um, and I really like their stuff. That's, that's probably my two favorite. My favorite song of all time is by Max Richter called On the Nature of Daylight. If you're, you care to know what I like, it's that, that song is, is my style all the way. Nice. Look it up. Have you ever played an instrument yourself? Cause you're, you're involved with the music pack as well. I have not. I started learning piano and never committed to getting very far in it, but I learned like a couple songs that I just learned the notes for and was satisfied for the time. But I do not. I mostly sing, I sing a lot. But that's just a hobby, not a. I'm not trained. Just, just the shower thing, or you go no? Well, more than that. It's more of I. I walk around practicing, but sing in the that's car. Cool. But yeah, I'll have to get your vocals on one of the monumental tracks. Oh dear. <laughs> what have I done? I'm uh, done to favorite... just continue on down the pit if you want. Sure. Favorite color? White. There's not really a story any, any there. I just like why? it's just empty, blank. Uh, oh, or well, all the colors. Yeah, yeah. I think of it more as a it's it's clean and austere and honest, and I just I like it on things. I like wearing white, and I like the the Greek thing, the Greek pillars, and yeah, yeah. Cool. It's pretty. Um, and now on to the one that I think you might have more opinions on: favorite video game. Yeah. Okay. So Bioshock. Uh, the original, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think where to start with that. So that was the intro. I, I like it for reasons beyond it just being a video game. Uh, I certainly think it's a really good video game, and I love it, and I've played it more than any other one from start to finish. But mm -hmm. it introduced me to a whole lot of concepts that I'd never been exposed to before, and it got me into... I read uh, all of Ayn Rand's works, which, were based, which it's based off of. And that led me into taking philosophical courses in school, which led me to C.S. Lewis and Aristotle. 
Ah, and, quite the rabbit hole. Yeah, and the, back to the video editing, the first foray into video editing I was made was to do a Bioshock lore video over a decade ago. That's when I first picked it up. Wow, before it was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, before the video <laughs> essay trend. So a huge amount of things in my life have been improved because I played Bioshock and it was kind of a gateway drug into all sorts of cool stuff. And while I do love it as a game, it wouldn't be the best game I've ever played, but I can't call anything else my favorite. Uh -huh. And as a shout out, uh, Dark Souls is, for the same reasons as Monumenta, kind of the ideal matchup of game elements. Mm -hmm. and so I have great affection for that. That'd be my strong number two. Awesome. But that's like, again, the most vanilla answer these days. Everyone loves Dark Souls. Yeah, that or Elden Ring. Yeah. Which is just kind of the continuation of it. Yippers. What's yours again? I know I asked that and I can't remember. Um, I think I probably said Monumenta, honestly. Nice. Or, or Minecraft. But I, I gave a couple of shout outs to games I think are. Yeah, underplayed. so these guys. Look at these guys. Oh, very good. These are the most boring, like, this is the end of the dungeon. Like, light, light blue gets the void section, and orange gets the final stand, and white gets gets Ketsy. Well, but this used to be it's a like, lot harder. It used to be, like, the light gray I guess, void, but it's like, there's like, just two guys die. standing here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I just think it's a huge anticlimax. Well, Although this, this always picture. tickles me. Oh, this <laughs> trap. Run, run forward. <laughs> This actually killed someone in no. our first player, in our That's first player terrible. as a guild. Oh, <laughs> that okay. Water section wrecked us. It's been redeemed <laughs> in my eyes. Then the end is not anticlimactic. If someone died to that, that's amazing. I'm sure more than just us, because you come out. I mean, that section was brutal, absolutely brutal when the True. dungeon first came out, and you you basically you just run for it after you ran out of the few sets of explorers gear, right? And so you're just death running it at that point. You make it with like two hearts left. Finally, it's over, and then nope, <laughs> you just walk over that trip, and you're you're gone. You get to do it again. Helly loves his pain. Yeah. Oh, you love it too. Hey. There's a difference <laughs> between sadism and masochism. Cool. So final few questions while we're wrapping up here. Uh, what do you draw from most for inspiration when you develop? Uh, I play a lot of video games and I come across a lot of ideas in those that I'm, I'm like, that could, not everything, but that could work in Monumenta. So I, I think about how it would work here and then throw it at us. But a lot of it is just playing the game and then saying, what would make this better? What do I want to see in here? And then I go and bug y'all in the discord and write proposals that get a lot of upvotes, but I'm clear that I probably can't make that myself. Yeah. Although that's changed and there's a lot of things I can't make now. Hey, I mean, ideas like the right ideas are insanely valuable. Yeah. And then speaking of that, and this is kind of back praise to Cron, a lot of the things I've come up with are very unrefined ideas that then Cron will take and make something really different and, cool for the game that's much more gamey like like Tre Tre treasures of viridia was originally my idea that was very different and much less much less uh sustainable yeah no crown's definitely good about taking an abstract idea and put it into something cool that actually exists but mm -hmm. you've done your fair share of map work as well oh uh tell us something interesting about you that no one else would ever think to ask okay so <laughs> this is going to sound like a total non sequitur but it's going to loop back around so uh that book mere christianity that i mentioned earlier was c.s lewis's uh it was a radio address that he gave during world war ii that was a commissioned by the bbc to educate the people of britain on the the basic theology of christianity and so he mm -hmm. took his notes the transcript from the radio broadcast and made a book out of it and a couple years ago, I took the book and rewrote it as a podcast and made it to release free because I noticed a lot of people like to listen to podcasts but don't read books. Mm -hmm. And so that was so I got the first book of that and then chased down uh, Lewis's stepson, who's also the manager of his estate and the producer of the Narnia movies, for like his blessing. And then, like, I, I got I got a ways into it and it was really cool to meet him. Um, but he like <laughs> revealed to me that international law doesn't work that way. And even if it's nonprofit and the guy's been dead for over 50 years, which in America means it's fair game, uh, you can't do that. So that was a fun Aww. educational thing, but it was really cool to get to have that interaction and 
rewrite my favorite book. Yeah, that sounds like a great experience. Yeah, that was cool. Okay, well, that is that is it for the standard questions. I have one more thing for you. So Between uh -oh. Two Wolves, this is the final episode. Uh, the first episode actually came out on February 20th, 2022. So we are one week from that oh, anniversary today. So That's by the time this comes excellent. out, it, it will have been a full year of Between Two Wolves. So how do you feel about the series overall? And is there anything you would have done differently if you could go back? Uh, I would have gotten more questions before starting because Kat got like 20 minutes to talk because there was so little to do and I had no expectations about how long these would be. I think I cut off Kat when he started talking about video games, you which did. is really hypocritical <laughs> given what I just did. So I, would, I wish I could have gotten a whole lot of questions and then kept them regular lengths because the people who volunteered early on were kind of kind of kind of uh, kicked out of a longer interview but overall yeah. i've been happy and y'all have been good sports and it's been great getting to know you all through this and introducing you to the game and or the community do you it's feel like you learned delight. anything about interviewing other people oh absolutely you usually do <laughs> uh, like about the people or about the act of interviewing yeah i mean i just assume this this is not something you do at your day job <laughs> no 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 <laughs> Although you, in fact, do you want to tell us, you might've mentioned it in your, your, interview, yeah, in my you, interview, I yeah, said, you have uh, experience yeah, I, I do, I do some commentary work part time. So I figured yeah. I'd be okay at it. Yes. But, and you were, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for hosting today. Absolutely. So on to the last bit, celebrate congrats on uh one year between two wolves. I mean, the community has really loved these. So any closing thoughts or statements that you want to say? Uh, yes. To anyone watching this, um, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and if you want to be introduced to him, I want to talk to you. You can DM me at Aristotle0001. I'd love to love nothing more than to have that conversation with you if you're seeing this. It's very generous of you. Well, Nick, Shadow, thank you so much for, for this. It's it's really it's really been a treat to get to do this interview series with y'all, because aside from my own selfish gain from getting to know you better and getting to have these fun play sessions and doing content so I wouldn't selfish. otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just I can't believe this works. I can't believe a bunch of internet randoms come together to make a game and we all get along as well as we do. No one's at our throats. None of these have been a pain to do. It's a blessing. Absolutely. We filled a whole year with them. So definitely yeah. been awesome to see. Well, so thank we you very might, much. Yeah. So we might do like an EP, if that's the right term. If uh, So we have this internal rank called core contributor, which is like the highest that isn't a lead. And if a dev reaches that and they want an interview, we'll... We'll, we'll reinstate the series for that, but otherwise, this is the last episode. Awesome. Those watching. So, thank you so much, and uh, I guess we won't see you next time unless we do that. <laughs> we'll see you some other time. Bye! Bye!